This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request, we've got from Azu Koro, very good name. Can you make the highest G-Force ever? Well, this is really interesting and I've been kind of secretly hoping someone would ask me this. So what he's asking is, in DCS, what is the highest G-Force we can create? So first of all, we really want to understand what is G-Force? The first thing is there's a bit of a contradiction in terms there. G-Force, two separate words. What's G? G is gravity on Earth. On Earth, at the Earth's crust, because the distance from the centre of the Earth to where you're measuring it, the gravity would differ. But at the Earth's crust, gravity is about 9.8. And it's not a force. Gravity is an acceleration. So 9.8 metres per second squared. An acceleration A equals distance over time squared. Change in velocity over time. Now, an acceleration is not actually a force. You can't technically feel an acceleration, but an acceleration can cause or be linked to a force. So, for instance, if we look here, we can see that F, force, the thing you feel, is intrinsically linked with A, acceleration. And we can see force equals mass times acceleration, or acceleration equals mass divided by force. So in terms of pulling G's, quote unquote, you're mainly going to see this or be thinking about it probably of a fighter, an F-16 turning around a point and to keep it absolutely simple as hell, he's going to turn around a perfect geometrical circle around the center point of that circle. When he does that, the pilot, technically the plane as well, but the pilot will experience a force, something he can feel known as the G force. It's a centrifugal force, the force that is pushing him away from the central circle, which is in this case being cancelled out by the centripetal force. Out of interest, the centrifugal force is F equals M W 2 R, where the different elements are thus. But remember that force is measured in Newtons. G is gravity. So what we're experiencing is a centrifugal force. It's a thing that's draining the blood out of our head and pulling our head down but we're measuring it in acceleration or in gravities. So if you're experiencing 10 Gs, you are experiencing 10 times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is 98 meters per second squared of acceleration. And by virtue of that, a certain amount of force measured in Newtons. So that's explaining the relationship between G or we quote G force and how it acts on us in a fighter aircraft in a turn. So the first thing we will want to do is get in our aircraft and turn around a centre point like that. And the problem with that is that we have a limit imposed on us by the pilot's human physiology. A human, even with a pressured G-suit, can only take about 8 to 9 Gs sustained before he passes out. And not a great deal more than that instantaneous. So if we loaded up DCS, we span around in circle with the fastest plane out there, we couldn't pull more than about 9G sustained because our pilot will just pass out and there's not really much we can do about that. So that's sustained G out of the window. Let's go to instantaneous G. That is where rather than sustaining the turn, we just do a very quick turn and we peak an instantaneous G, which is very short amount of time, but a very high figure of acceleration and therefore force on the pilot and the aircraft. With this, we run into a problem again. Let's say we're in our Tomcat or F-16 or F-18. We pull the stick very hard back. We're not intending to sustain any G or centrifugal force. We just want to peak it very quickly. Well, the problems are that our wings will fall off. DCS realizes the G-force, the acceleration, is too hard at the peak and the wings will fall off. And I'm sure you've all had this happen to your F-14, your F-18, your F-16 and whatever. What we can do is we can turn Immortal on, in theory, at that point, in DCS, the wings will no longer fall off, and we can try to create the highest instantaneous G possible. Then we come to the next problem. Just about all of the aircraft that we're interested in, i.e. the ones that are going to go really fast and have big control surfaces like Tomcats and F-16s and stuff, have flight augmentation systems, whether they're digital, mechanical, long arm, short arm, and it dates all the way back to the early 50s, the beginning of supersonic flight, that deliberately stop the aircraft and the pilot from creating a high instantaneous G. For instance, get in your F-15, go really fast, pull back on the stick quick, 
The flight augmentation system understands that the pilot is asking for too much instantaneous G and stops his actual movements happening by modifying the flight surface position. And this is pretty much impossible to get out of. The only way we think we can get out of this is you have an ACS delimiter in the flanker in DCS, we think, which will override the flight augmentation system and allow direct control of the rear stabs in terms of pitch, which are obviously our biggest control surfaces. So pitch is where we're going to get our maximum G-force. So what we can do, hopefully, and this may simply not be modelled in DCS, we don't know, but we hopefully we can go at Mach 2, uh, or as fast as we can, down low where the air pressure is high, and we can pull back on the stick with the direct link to the rear stabs and hopefully pull a really high instantaneous G loading with Immortal on so our wings don't fall off. That's the best thing I can think of doing for y'all. But before we go, there is another way that I think we can answer the question. The question was, what's the highest G you can pull? I think it was, the syntax was. Technically, what he's asking for is he's asking, what is the maximum acceleration that we can experience in DCS, sustained or instantaneous? Well, there's another way of doing it. We don't have to go around in a circle. What about this? Here's an example. That is a tower block. That is a cow. I've been told to say it's a robot mechanical cow. The cow walks off the edge of the building. This is on the Earth's crust where we're experiencing that amount of gravity there, that acceleration. Ignoring things like wind resistance and other factors, just imagine we're in a perfect vacuum in a perfect world. The cow, after zero seconds, will have a downward speed, a downwards vector of zero meters per second. Due to the fact that the Earth's gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, after one second of fall, the cow will be moving at 9.8 meters per second, like 30 miles an hour or something like that. Let's imagine that it's a 10 second fall before he hits the ground, okay? And I'm sure he'll be fine once he's hit the ground. After the 10 second fall, exactly when he hits the ground, he will be traveling at 98 meters per second. That's another way of describing how this acceleration force can act on our guy. Now, Here's the interesting bit. In the very tiny, tiny fraction of time, it's not instantaneous, it did take time, but in a tiny amount of time, a millisecond, a nanosecond, whatever, this cow goes from 98 meters per second, maximum velocity in this case, to zero. That means we get a massive change in velocity over a very small amount of time. And if we go back to our formula of A equals distance over time squared, what does that mean? It means that he's actually going to experience a huge acceleration force technically a deacceleration force but deacceleration is the same thing in physics as acceleration with an inverse vector so the best way thinking about this that i can get the biggest g loading possible in dcs is to throw my cow off a bridge or better get my tomcat and fly it into a building and it will deaccelerate from mach 2 to zero in a fraction of a second. And if we can find a way of measuring A equals distance over time squared at that point, I'm gonna give you what is technically, I suspect, the highest possible G loading in DCS, the highest possible acceleration. We're in a pair of flankers. The first thing we're gonna try is the instantaneous uh, G loading via a centrifugal force. What we're gonna do is press this button here, ping, direct control of the stabs, if that's what it is actually modeled in DCS. As fast as we can, pull back on the stick and measure the G loading, okay? Now we're not sure whether to do this high or low. High, we can get our plane going faster, so our velocity is higher. Low, because it's not that simple in real life. In real life, it's much more complex. In real life, we have to think about how effective our wings and rear stabs are in the air. They're not very effective up here because the air pressure is very low. Down low, the air pressure is very high. We are therefore have very effective wings and rear stab so we the plane can roll rock harder but we can't go as fast because the high pressure so what we're gonna do is rc will go high i'll go low we'll go as fast as we possibly can and we'll do it are you ready rc ready fuel 1500 watch this oh my god i passed out <laughs> don't you worry rc don't you worry okay i'm all good baby i'm off the end of the speedo Where's the Mac? 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 Well, 1.5, that's as high as I'm getting. Right, I'm getting ready for S. I'm slowing down. And that's simply a fact of that the air pressure is getting higher, Valley viewers. Maximum speed. Yeah, I can't get it. I'm about 1.6. Roger. Yes, you won't get it. Maximum yeah. Speed. And... Yep. 1.7. Maximum speed. Okay. That's me done. Punching out. 
Now, when you do it, also, you have to press S and then pull up really quickly because what it's actually going to do is nose, because these are nose heavy aircraft, it's going to nose you right. forward. So, what you want to do is S pull, like really quickly and solidly. So, right, you're going to start slowing down soon. I'll get it done now because okay. you're going to start hitting right. that thick air boundary. Do it. So, 2.3 so, S. Yeah. Okay. And passed out. Confirm that you're, when you come back, just confirm that you did actually have the S. Okay, viewers, now we're going to test our maximum in terms of uh, linear or technically deacceleration. Basically the same thing. It's technically still a G-loading, just measured slightly differently. We're going to take our F-14s. We apologize for ruining these lovely F-14s, but science, DCS science is important. What we're going to do, RC, is pitch our nose down, get as much speed as we possibly can, and run into the mountain. I've got okay. nothing else to say to you. Three, two, one, and pause. Phone is on. Right. I'm going to make sure I've got rid of all my stores. Straight down? Yep. Well, just whatever you feel like. I don't think there's a wrong way of yeah, doing this. Speed up. Now, the interesting thing, Valley viewers, going straight down isn't necessarily the way to get an airplane to go as fast as speed. In fact, I know it's not. It's really weird kind of, um, uh, I don't know, weird thing you get with, with physics. Uh, maybe that's something we'll explore at some point. Yeah. It's all due to air resistance uh, and acceleration. Mark one point. Eight. I'm not going to lie, this might hurt. Right. Mach 1.75 and... Ooh, the linear deacceleration was mad! It was mad, RC! Off the scale for speed. RC! Oh. oh, I pressed the wrong button and it went to a train! What the hell? The hell? Who does that? Many thanks, RC. You've been very, very useful. Let me see if you're bouncing and you are. There you go. Right. Do you get the idea now, RC, of what we were trying to prove? The linear deacceleration? Yeah, it just depends on whether TAC will show it. It probably won't right. because it's so quick. Here's the thing. It's going to be measured so quick. Nothing in reality happens um, apart from, I think, subatomic particles. Nothing happens instantaneously. Okay. Even, you know, the Big Bang, it, ha it took time. So this is actually going to take time for the aircraft to slow down. Uh, and we're going to see how if DCS allows us to monitor that in TAC view. It probably won't. There I am. The G loading is there. How many times? 9.8 meters per second per second. 20, 25, 26, 26. That's a bit disappointing. I was hoping for 50G there. RC, so there's got that pitch down moment. That's fine. 15, 20, it went up to about 18. And you see that kind of bouncing about? That's probably just latency because uh, he's doing a very quick maneuver and he's got 200 millisecond latency. So, yeah. I'll say it was about 18, but... Okay, so 26 is the biggest we can think of doing. Now, get ready for the big one. It's all about whether, how France, who makes this software, measures it. Is he only measure, measuring centrifugal kind of G-loading, or is he going to be measuring a linear as well? Um, I don't actually know. It's should, also about what the... I should uh, ask him. What the, pro, what the software reports. That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I just said. Is it reporting so, linear deacceleration? Right. I know. That's... Well, let's see. Oh, it did something... Yeah, I did something, but no, I should expect hundreds or thousands of G, and this is as slow, much as I can slow it down. Where's the velocity? There's the velocity, CAS. When that reaches zero... Oh no, he's put a little cheeky little thing in it. Uh, so it doesn't deaccelerate, it deaccelerates slowly. Even though it's not yeah. moving. Oh, how frustrating is that? You see what I mean? It's measuring it, as you can see, but his the, the speed is, is is working differently. It says it's right. still slowing down, which is not. Oh damn it! Oh, that's fine. It's just the way TAC view works. Maybe that's the way DCS works as well. It, maybe it just can't handle 5,000 g uh, on the aircraft, and that's the way they've got around it. So unless you guys can figure out something more clever than me, which let's face it is very likely, 26 g is the most I can think of pulling. Anything you want to add to that RC? Nope. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you later.